Awesome. So usually we like to start, um, I'll just say this for the recording. Uh, my name is Anna. I'm the co-chair of the Austin Democratic Socialists of America. And this is a joint training with Austin is Safer When uh, to talk about electoral organizing. We're, we're just going to cover the basics today. So it's kind of an introduction. Um, we like to start our meetings with community agreements um, to, you know, build relationships and uh, make sure that everybody feels comfortable speaking. Um, so they're not necessarily rules, but um, just some guidelines to help people be respectful of each other. Um, one person, one mic. That means if someone's talking, then we're not unmuting um, and talking over them. And I think uh, how this relates to chat, it's fine to um, contribute in chat, but when it starts getting to a point of people having like side conversations, um, it can be hard to pay attention to both. And it's almost like talking over somebody. Um, so comments in chat are good. Just, you know, if you start typing out a manifesto, then maybe just uh, raise your hand or get on stack, which I'll talk about. Um, assume people are speaking with goodwill. Um, we're all here because we care deeply about, um, you know, changing our city and our society at large. Um, not everybody is at the same place in their organizing journey. And sometimes people say things that will probably be upsetting, but it's important to assume goodwill. Everyone here is committed to, you know, building a better world. Um, ask yourself, why am I talking? You know, this is particularly important for people who you know, find themselves interjecting a lot. Um, we'll moderate, of course, but um, yeah, if, you know, if you've already spoken, it's good practice to make space for people who haven't spoken yet to share their opinion or thoughts about whatever the topic is we're discussing. Um, keeping it comradely, I ex I'm sure everyone here will, but, um, you know, we're all, like I said, we're assuming goodwill, so be nice. And um, protect each other. It's, you know, we wanna assume goodwill. And if if somebody says something that's upsetting, you know, you don't necessarily want to call them out, but um, I guess people say, call them in. Um, it's okay to speak up if some something is, you know, if you feel like some something is wrong or you need to call out some, shitty behavior. Um, that's the last time I'll curse. I, I swear. Okay. Um, so any questions? Uh, feel free to pop anything in the chat. Oop. Okay. So just to give you an overview of what we're going to talk about. Um, first, we'll talk about what is organizing. I know that seems really basic, but the, the way that we engage the community is pretty different than how most people are used to when it comes to electoral work. So I thought it's helpful to kind of give a brief description of like how we think organizing is different from what's normally practiced, which is more of like a mobilizing approach um, to winning our electoral goals. Uh, then Jacob will talk about some basic practices like what actions we take when we want to win these campaigns, and then talk about some more practical tips for these tactics. And then finally, we'll do an activity, and then we'll debrief and get everyone's feedback. So first, um, organizing versus mobilizing. Some of you may have heard of this distinction before. Um, it's popularized by a very famous um, labor organizer named Jane McAlevey. We often in DSA talk about her one of her books called No Shortcuts, um, which I uh, talk about later if you're interested in you know, looking it up. Um, but some of the main differences relate to how you're engaging people. And, and I think this does matter for how we talk to people um, when we call them at the doors um, or just, you know, engaging with 
someone you meet on the street, you'd be surprised. Uh, I recently met someone at Workhorse um, who just overheard a couple of comrades and I talking about um, District 4 candidates. And um, we talked with her and she came to a canvas and she was like interested in getting more involved. Um, so it's really an approach to how you talk with people. Um, and here's some differences. Um, organizing prioritizes building power by involving regular people. The, the main goal is to get as many people as possible on our side so that we, we can win. And as a socialist, this is important because as a socialist, our main um, strength against the, the people that we're trying to win against who are the capitalist class is our numbers, right? Um, the, the people that we're trying to defeat at the ballot box have significantly more money than us. Um, they have better social networks that are stronger, like more bonded to each other. They go to the same country clubs um, and there's a lot more barriers for regular people in coming together and winning fights. Um, so moving as a mass collective uh, is how we will do transformative politics that will result in material changes. Um, and of course, that makes one-on-ones and relationship building really important to this work. Um, we're not just trying to, you know, turn people out. Um, we recognize that organizers are people and they have full lives. Um, you know, they're not just a number on a spreadsheet that we call every other week. Um, they're people that we want to activate and get involved in the movement. Um, and mobilizing, it's not bad. I don't want to say that, you know, we shouldn't mobilize because it, it's still a tactic that we use. Um, but the main difference is that if you're only mobilizing people, um, you know, you won't have a long-term success. Uh, so mobilizing is typ typically when um, professional staff and activists are setting goals um, as opposed to like a more collaborative community goal setting process where um, normal people have a say in, you know, not only what the goal is, but what the strategy is, how we get to the goal. Um, and often, you know, you can have a really successful mobilizing campaign where you get, you know, hundreds of people at a protest, for example, um, and it's a super successful action. And maybe you even get, you know, like city council to pass something. But if there isn't sustained action, and if the people aren't organized beyond that one event, then, you know, sometimes you can win big and not have the, you know, the staying power to actually get your, you know, electoral um, campaign goals implemented. And uh, I think that, at least for me personally, this was a, a big problem with, you know, how the successes we had during the defund APD campaign. Um, it was great that city council defunded by 150 million, but we weren't organized enough to really as a, not just in Austin, because, you know, the state also pushed back on that, but we have to, we have to go beyond that one budget vote. Um, and the way that we do that is organizing. Um, yeah, so obviously we still need to mobilize people to come to events. Um, but if the main difference that I want to drive home is that um, the goals that we're fighting for are long-term investments and we're trying to transform our electoral system um, to actually serve people it, and the process is really important. So um, why is it important? Um, as y'all know, because you're here, we, we need skills like how to talk to people um, to actually have a more democratic state. Um, and so we're always trying to move people into the bullseye. This is from a labor notes uh, guide on how to be a successful organizer. And so you're always going to have people that are all the way on the outside that are hostile. Um, but when we're talking to people, 
usually they're going to be disengaged. Um, and the goal is to just always be trying to move them in in the circle to, you know, not everybody is going to be a dedicated activist. Um, it's just time consuming and requires a lot of enthusiasm. But to the extent that you can be moving somebody who is just completely um, disillusioned with the political system from disengaged to a supporter, and then, you know, they see over the course of several campaigns that oh wow, this group is, um, they're really out here in the community, um, they're talking to people and they're, they're winning. And that might later motivate them to you know, step up and take on more responsibilities. Awesome. Uh, that, was, um, that was a great setup, Anna. Um, I'm gonna talk now about basic practices and principles of organizing. Um, which are, which yeah, what they sound like, practices and principles and kind of how those intersect. One of the first big ones um, that, that you'll encounter in like most organizing frameworks is that it's typically one-on-one. -on -one. And there's lots of reasons for that, but mainly it's that there's an ease of communication and trust in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. That's like the lowest threshold for people to connect. And, um, it's, uh, and it's also like, you know, where you can share authentically and like they can do the same. Um, so most organizing frameworks are going to be one on one and are also going to be in real time. The major methodologies that campaigns, especially electoral use, um, are doors, phones, texts and events. In labor organizing, of course, there's also like workplace organizing, but even there, there's strategic design about how you can create reliable contact. And that's what these real-time contact methods are about, that they can reliably create a contact rate. So canvassing doors means you're gonna be knocking on doors, like a specified list or turf of doors. That's usually like designed in a strategic way by your organization to talk to like a specific set of stakeholders. And the same is true for phones, phone banking and text banking. Phone banking is where you call people and you conduct live calls over the phone and text banking is live exchanges of text. And then events is a little bit different. Um, events um, is where you, you know that you have a political or social event that's salutary to your movement or organization's goal or mission. And so you send people there to, uh, to canvas the people and try to engage them in, in the type of one-on-one -on -one real time person-to-person uh, -person conversation that you would otherwise generate at the door when you're knocking on doors. So no matter how you're making contact with people, generating these real-time one-on-ones, you want to always be honest and transparent um, about who you are, who you're with, and what the goal or objective is, um, or you know the or you know underlying mission or program. Um, and in the same vein, if they ask you a question, especially a fact-based question, you don't know the answer, you know, just say, um, "I don't know, but I'll find out for you as quick as I can," you know. So it's just as a general principle, and I, and you know, I don't think anyone will have a problem with that. But it's also like really important, obviously, to like build up their trust, and also to like you know for them to start thinking about how interested they're gonna be in what you're talking to them about, and what their what their worldview, what their beliefs around that already are. Um, and then that gets us to like you know, you sharing that part of yourself with them, right? That's personal commitment. We're gonna do an exercise uh, that kind of focuses on this concept itself called the story of self exercise. But basically you wanna to talk to them about, you know, what is your personal commitment, your personal interest, your belief in worldview that, that causes and impels you to do this organizing and how does that relate to the mission? Um, because hopefully in what you say, they're gonna hear something that they relate or empathize with. And that's gonna encourage them to do the same and reciprocate. And it's also going to encourage them to think more deeply about the issue, about organizing, about being more involved in their community. So it's important to, uh, to, to, to have that introspective, you know, conversation with yourself, too, and, 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 and figure out, like, you know, why you feel and think the, uh, the way you do and how you come to organizing from that. And that brings us to, like, a big tension in organizing, at least in my view, which is how to have an open-ended and relational organizing conversation with someone and still keep it focused on an underlying objective, which is typically organizing them into a movement or organization or getting them to take part in an organizational program, like voting or volunteering 
you know, participation in some level. So in order to like have like real success, like genuine, authentic, lasting success, you do have to create like a, a discursive framework, right? Where both of you can share openly and honestly, and it can be open-ended precisely because they're going to ask questions and like questions by their nature open-ended, especially when they deal with things like values. On the other hand, you have to, you have to like keep the discourse guided and like on topic in a general sense and like be focusing on how, you know, the things that they're sharing, the things you're both sharing relate back to like this underlying issue or campaign and why that motivates you both to action. So, um, yeah, and, it, and it's a difficult tension to resolve that like will a lot of times come down to, you know, the, the organization, um, the mission and the, uh, the stakeholding group that you're talking to. Um, is, is organizing like, you know, about channeling people's feelings toward ends or is it more about finding out who they are and what they need and how your organization or movement can meet that and synthesize with that? And uh, that's, that doesn't have an easy answer, you know? But it is, um, I think it's a big kind of principle to, to think about when you're organizing. And generally, you know, you want to lean toward learning more about who they are, watching how much, you know, you're talking versus how much you're listening um, and, and trying to like, you know, really find out about, uh, about them and, and what they think and believe. And so that takes us to concerted action toward a common goal, which is kind of the underlying crux of what we're trying to generate with, um, with organizing, right? So, so um, concerted action is, is like, you know, kind of like what we want them to, to be continuously engaged in. It's more than simply voting or signing up to attend an event. We want to engage and involve folks in an ongoing collective enterprise, like an organization, like a movement, like a campaign toward the accomplishment of like a set of discrete goals or the execution of a program on an ongoing basis. And that's like what a common goal can look like, right? But it can, it can look like a lot of things. Um, concerted action looks like membership, chronic or continuous participation in activities, group planning and strategy, like Anna was talking about being involved in like the, the strategy and the execution, um, dialogue and group communications on these topics and solidarity with the group in public actions and messaging. And common goals, like I said, can be as simple as like electing a representative or as complex as like running a community space or, or something programmatic like that. And finally, like a big part of, of organizing from this perspective and really even for like more mobilizing, uh, even for mobilizing is continued engagement. So coming back to our number two methods of contacting them um, again and again and offering them like new opportunities or like news about goals and programs that we're doing that correspond again to like their interests and like their, the worldview that we've learned about from them. Um, thoughts and questions, I guess, because that was kind of a big download uh, before we were gonna jump into tips and tricks. Oh, well, we can just keep it moving because then we're going to get into like more sharing and uh, in a training session. So that's that's all good. All right. So this is stuff um, that uh, we brainstormed with folks who have a lot of experience, especially the Austin is Safer When uh, organizing staff. And these are like practical tips and tricks to, to do, especially when you're electoral organizing, when you're organizing around electing a candidate or uh, passing or defeating a proposition, something like that, that revolves around an election. Um, and this, this part is a little bit resourcey, so sorry if it's a little long, but uh, people can refer back to it and read it, so that's good. Um, you always want to reiterate the candidate's name in the office that they're seeking, or the initiative's name, you know, make sure that they know what you're talking about and how you want them to vote on it, or, you know, you know how your organization wants them to vote, so to speak. Um, Always reiterate the dates, you know, of early voting, election day, as well as well as where they can get like more information about where and when to vote and how. That's really important. Um, never mention the opponent if possible. Um, that's a piece of conventional wisdom that, um, it's def you know, definitely there's uh, differing views on it. But typically, if you want to go negative, just talk about like your candidate. Like my candidate, I support 
John Smith because he's honest and transparent, you know, he would never embezzle funds from the county or something like if you're up against someone who did that right that's a way to talk about what happened without being specifically negative or mentioning them. Um, definitely exceptions to this, you know, uh, as and it kind of pertains to like the, the grade of what they did and how germane it is to the race or the issue but in general, you want to keep name ID low for your opponent because name ID is kind of a really important predictor in a lot of races, for better or for worse. Um, and, uh, you know, we talked about this a little bit before, but make sure that you understand like why you support the candidate or initiative. That's going to inform your story of self. That's going to be like the key way in most cases how you connect to another person is like what you share of yourself and how vulnerable you are with them. That's going to, you know, let them get to know you a little bit and make them more comfortable doing the same. Um, and, and, it's, and it's frankly just like one of the most persuasive things, you know, because uh, that shows that that gives them a, a chance to relate, you know, and kind of see how they would benefit too. Um, you always want to log your results. I mean, I think this applies to all organizing, but especially, you know, on electoral, you're often going to be using the voter activation network or another digital system. So you just want to always log your results door to door or on the phones or while you're texting. And that's how the campaign of the organization is going to take, um, take advantage in future action of that work you did, you know, how we're going to do continued um, contact and so on. Um, and, and this one, this one, I, uh, next one I think is, is also like informs some of the others, you know, um, it's important to research and understand the issues in the history underlying your candidate or your initiative. Um, because, uh, and we talked about this earlier about the open ended way that a lot of organizing conversations go is people are going to talk to you back and only one of you is on a script. Um, you're on a script, but they're not. They're going to ask questions. They're going to have thoughts and, and different feelings that, that you, know, you, you can't prepare for all of. But the more that you know about what you're talking about, the more ready you'll be to answer the good questions they have and like convince them to be confident in the endeavor. Um, on the other hand, like just with a script and some basic research, you're going to catch a lot of people cold. So I don't want this one to be intimidating, you know? And the best way to build confidence and build skill, I think, in organizing is just going out there and trying and doing it. So on the other hand, I don't want y'all to feel like this one's like a barrier or like a hill to get over before you can start organizing. But it will make you more effective the more that you know about what you're talking about. OK. Uh, yeah. So similar vein, right? A uh, really similar vein to the last one is confidence is really important when you're organizing training, research, other forms of preparation, and doing it uh, will build your confidence in the, uh, in the field. And this is often uh, key to like effective presentation and therefore being effective. On the other hand, like I said, doing it is a great way to learn it and gain confidence, especially when you do it with an organization um, or a group of individuals that do it a lot and can teach you the ropes. So don't be afraid to get out there. Don't look at this as like a hill to get over, um, just something to build up and something to practice in the field. Um, another bit of practical advice, know the endorsements that your campaign or your initiative has gotten because prominent groups and individuals have name ID and they have like a sort of amount of public support of their own, their own base in the community, ideally, I mean, hopefully, right? And so mentioning them in support of your candidate or campaign will help to garner that. Um, and, and it's important to know. Um, also, this, this one's kind of like some of the other ones we've already touched on, but like it's a little more practical and that's like the office that they're running for, their platform and what can be done. Make sure that you're not over promising basically, know your candidate's platform, know their promises, how they plan to achieve them practically. Um, that can be difficult and it can be difficult to synthesize when you're out of door with somebody, but it will like help you explain, you know, practically, uh, you know, what the goal you're trying to achieve is and how you're gonna do it. And, uh, and I think that's important. I think it's also like a good way to kind of provide some civic education to folks out there where you can talk about, you know, how a legislature is going to produce an outcome with a law, et cetera. Um, and, and I think that's important for organizations to look at when they're, when they're doing their programs in the first place. So um, it's also gonna be some of the first questions you get a lot of the time. Uh, especially from the, from the most informed voters. Um, that was another big download. And so we wanna hear from y'all. We know a lot of y'all have organizing experience. What are some tips and tricks that y'all have or things that y'all have learned in your own experience out there?
yeah, and uh, if you can type stack if you if you want to. All right, Leah. Um, I think something that was really helpful in the Prop A campaign was uh, connecting how the proposition or the campaign would impact the people's lives specifically. Um, I know we've really focused on what services someone might be impacted or like what of the services that were going to be cut, which would most um, impact that person's lives. And then people started to really respond positively to our messaging. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. That's um, it's a good example. Oh, Anna. Yeah, um, I also I I'll give an example, but I also as we're talking about confidence building, um, if anyone is nervous, uh, as an organization that's mostly volunteers, we try not to. Sometimes it happens just because um, you know oversight, but we try not to send people out alone. So if you come to one of our canvases and you're new, um, you're gonna be with someone else who has already done this before. Um, but tips from personal organizing experience. Um, yeah, I'd say, you know, if someone's being really difficult, sometimes it's just like not even worth it to fight with them. Um, I had one lady, we did some canvassing for Green New Deal for public schools. And I had one person, I was so prepared um, to talk to everyone about this. I'd done all this research and it's a federal, it was a federal bill, right? So she was like, where's the money gonna come from? And it was like, well, the federal government, you know, they don't, they don't have to raise taxes to do this. Um, and she just wanted to like go into inflation and then it quickly devolved into her being like, I still care about schools, even though I don't support this. And um, yeah, sometimes you just close the door on those people um, and go to the next one. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. Like sometimes you just gotta call it. Um, other folks on stack? Um, hmm. Well, oh, Mikey, hey, go ahead. Hey, hey, I just want, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, hold on. Also want to say another little tip that I think I just thought up earlier this evening was avoid doing householding, which is don't, oh, don't like mark an entire household down on van. If one person answers the door, don't mark that as all the people's responses because you don't want to count your chickens before they hatch. So just avoid yet yeah, avoid doing that if all possible. It's only try and only mark the info for the person who answers if they answer, like if they verify who they are. Okay, man, that's just it. That's my piece. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, when you're uh, when you're logging data, yeah, log it individually. That's that is good advice. Um. All right. Well, um, if Unless anyone wants to chime in, uh, I think we can move into the story of self exercise. Sound good, Anna? Yeah, um, sure. Okay, so some of y'all might have done this before, but I think it's good to continue doing it again and, um, you know, just evaluating where you're at with what motivates you to do this work. Um, but basically in this activity, um, you just wanna, we'll, we'll partner off um, and then you just wanna, with your partner, share for like two minutes kind of what got you involved in you know doing organizing work. Um, and this is really helpful in understanding like what motivates you and can give you kind of some insight into how to connect with people because you know you have your issues that you care about that brought you to this work and other people you know other people have their issues too um, and it, it's really helpful in being able to relate your story um, you know not just so people trust you but 
also so they can see oh this other completely normal person who you know hasn't been training to do this since high school um, is out here and you know they are making sense and they're confident and it really helps people see that like i could i could also do this um yeah so let me let me i'm sorry i didn't have the breakout rooms prepared let me stop recording